I get good feedback on my work from clients and colleagues, but I really struggle, struggle with feeling like an imposter, like someone's going to find out I'm not good enough. Any advice? Yes. Uh, I think everyone I know, and this seems to be even more true among developers that I think are really great, tend to have this feeling and suffer from this idea. Uh, it's called imposter syndrome, and it's incredibly common, and I'm very familiar with it myself. Um, objective reality, if I look around exactly like this person is saying, objective feedback can tell me, yeah, I'm a good developer. I've solved lots of problems, done lots of good work. But the thing about programming is uh, it's incredibly um, wide-ranging in terms of the, the feelings that I get from it. Uh, when you're stuck on a problem and you're stuck on the same problem for hours or even days, uh, it can get incredibly uh, demoralizing and frustrating. Uh, and for me, it's easy to fall into the trap that I just can't hack it anymore. Uh, I've lost whatever made me good. I'm not smart enough. Uh, you know, I just can't do it anymore. Or, or even start to feel like maybe I never really was that good to begin with. And the thing that I've learned to do is to tell myself that even though those feelings feel real, they're not. There's something in me that's, that's really telling me a lie. And um, over time, with experience, I've learned to believe those kind of inner critic voices less and, and just really kind of wait for, um, for th things to come along. Um, something also interesting that I've learned that kind of relates to this whole thing. Um, there's a uh, book, I'm, I'm hoping I get the title right, I'll verify this uh, in the show notes, but Pragmatic Thinking and Learning, I think, is the title of the book. And it really talks a lot about the way that your brain works. And it turns out there's two parts of your brain uh, that kind of work together to solve problems. Uh, one of which is a um, more kind of a linear sequential kind of processor, if you use an analogy to, to computers. Uh, where you just kind of churn on a problem and you eventually solve it. You just keep thinking about a problem and eventually come up with an answer. Uh, but it turns out there's a whole other part of your brain uh, that makes much bigger leaps but works in the background. And it can only work uh, when the other more sequential part of your brain isn't active. And so what this means is um, if you stop actively thinking about a problem and do something else, it allows this background part of your brain to kick in. And if you've ever had the experience of a solution to a problem that you've been working on for hours or days suddenly coming to you in the shower or while you're exercising or doing something completely unrelated, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So what I've learned is a lot of times it's better to, to disengage, to take a break, to go do something else. Uh, and that's also why um, time constraints can be deadly to really successful software development. Uh, in terms of not, there are time constraints, I understand that, but artificial stress, pressure, deadlines can really kill uh, great ideas in software development. And if there's any way that you can lower the pressure and lower the stress, you're going to have more effective development.